Hello again, YouTubers, Autumn with SpongeBob 101, back here again on the SpongeBob channel with our review of Cam Coral, SpongeBob's Under Years, Episode 23, Reggie Hild and the Perfect Camper. This hypnosis states, Narlene and Nobby teach Reggie Gill all about backwoods living. Also, the Trawler Cabin creates the perfect camper to compete in the Camp Summer Games. Let's dive right in. Starting off with Reggie Hild, the title says it all. Reggie Gill gains a new side as a Hill Billy. The episode begins with Reggie Gill waking up at 4am to prepare breakfast for Missy, Upturn, Rhea and Ro, only to have the order changed at the last minute. So while he whips up new pancakes that he originally prepared for Missy, which was perfectly at 185 degrees Fahrenheit, is left on the table. And then served later to Missy, who realizes that it is now 2 degrees cooler. A mere 2 degrees. Unfortunately, this means Reggie Gill is out of a job for his negligence, so what a poor guy. He even has to put up the butler one sign at the door. Spongebob promptly shows up to be the new butler by demonstrating his attention and using his eyeballs as coasters for drink cups before they land on the tail. Nice drama there though. Later, Narlene and Nobby are collecting mushrooms and mistake Reggie Gill lying down wallowing in his sadness as the Mushroom King because of his hit similarity with mushrooms. They invite him to their place for food, but Nobby still bites onto him though, it's kinda silly. Reggie Gill is uncomfortable and the filth and dirt that permeates every area of the narwhal house really affects Reggie Gill and he attempts to clean things up while Narlene and Nobby looked on, remaining puzzled. Spongebob is doing a great job of making sure the tea is just the right temperature, although he actually uses his tongue as the thermometer instead. Wait till Missy finds out. Turns out Reggie Gill also had tons of responsibility that were now resting on the shoulders of an eager Spongebob. Him dumping literally anything from Patrick to another washing machine to even a kayak into the washer was pretty funny and then he gets sucked into it. So yeah, I'm not even sure how it can fit all that junk but it does. It's a cartoon. Meanwhile back at the Narwhal house, Reggie Gill cleans up the entire place even the sugar squeeze machine. And this triggers Narlene's and Nobby's allergy to fancy. They try to demonstrate how they let nature do the cleaning for them instead, and this leads to several epic scenes. We also get to see the 10am sea bear tear Reggie Gill to bits, just like Squidward got mauled back in the camping episode. Reggie Gill eventually faints after seeing how they wash the dishes by letting the sea meal out the window, lick it clean. Honestly, this was pretty disgusting, but also kind of funny, I must admit. Spongebob's time as a butler comes to a close when he first washes the entire cabin and Lady Upturn, Rhea and Ro all come out at an unfortunate time and slip and crash into each other. The straw that breaks the camel's back was when Spongebob is caught preparing tea for Missy Upturn using his tongue and filtering the tea using his body. Of course he gets fire and Lady Upturn, Rhea and Rose somehow know that Reggie Gill is at the Narwhal household and go there to demand that Reggie Gill return to be a butler. However, Narlene insists that Miss Yupturn will have to win a foot wrestling competition in order for that to happen. And while she initially gets ahead, Narlene defeats her in the end. Seeing how Missy exerted herself to convince Reggie Gill to return, he voluntarily accepts and does so, but still retains his hillbilly side as we see in the ending, where he sneakily puts a dish out the window to let Spongebob like it clean so yeah Spongebob's in on the game now. The plot gets 8 out of 10. I did enjoy this episode given that it was a great focus on Reggie Gill and gave us a little bit more character development of a secondary character who has thus far really been only operating in the background. In addition it gives us a reminder not to take things for granted or people for granted either and to value these people around us. Animation gets 8 out of 10. I thought the use of the tongue as a thermometer on Spongebob's part was really cool and him just doing the work of a butler was a nice shakeup. But more importantly, I think while the foot wrestle competition had some nice scenes, including the animals in the stands, the weird hillbilly things that Narlene and Nobby were demonstrating were super creative. Just remember, visitors always come through the open windows, not the doors. Unique characteristics gets 8 out of 10. There was great character development for Reggie Gill and to a certain extent, Missy as well. Spongebob being inserted here didn't feel like an afterthought. 
instead being a good way for Missy to compare between the two and realize the value that Reggie Gill had to her cabin and herself. It's nice to see Spongebob playing a role in the lives of secondary characters. Overall, Reggie Hilt gets 24 out of 30 from me. We then move on to The Perfect Camper, which once again focuses on the spooky campers from the Trawler cabin. The annual Camp Coral Summer Games are underway, and while the Trawlers think they have a good chance to pick up a few wins, they don't at all. Roxy smashes through the net during a badminton match with Rhea and Ro. Kit Ferratu ends up losing to Craig Mamilton in the hammer throw since the former literally drops it on himself. Breda ends up knitting a scarf onto crabs while Kevin creates a majestic knitted castle and even knight armor for Harvey winning them that round. Even in the competition to see who's the most disgusting camper, Jimmy Blobfish's slime is no match for epic Patrick's actions of coating pancakes in Jimmy's slime and then eating it. Patrick is just epic in this show, seriously. Given this, the Trawlers decide to pursue a plan to steal specific things from the other counselors while they are asleep, ranging from Larry's shell, Upturn's hair, Squidward's ink, and Bubble Bass's retainer, all of which are dumped into a cauldron and soon a creature known as as Clay is created. Clay gains entry into the games even though rules state that a counselor needs to be unable to compete given that Kid Ferratu voluntarily disintegrates himself. Basically all the counselors are supposed to compete in an obstacle course kind of reminds me of Ninja Warriors or Wipeout. They start with the tire field and Clay pulls some tricks immediately collapsing a stone wall on his competition and then smashing right through them on the zip line. As they cross the lake, the anchovies are pelting them with electrified chum balls, and Clay just copies Larry's ability to hit the balls away while Bubble Bass gets fried. We then get to hand gliding, where Larry and Clay are still front runners. Funny how Upturn literally has Reggie Gill holding her through the entire course. How is that not an unfair advantage? Anyways, her hair gets released accidentally while they are hand gliding, and this blinds Reggie Gill, causing them to crash. So they're out. Squidward, afraid of the hand gliding drop, decides to let the hand glider crash on a cliffside to SpongeBob, Patrick's, and Sandy's shock while he sits back and relaxes, disqualifying himself. The last stretch is a sea mule race, and Clay then activates his Squid Ink ability to boost himself across the finish line, winning him the first place trophy. It gets even more interesting that he then refuses to share the win with the trawlers in a surprising turn of tables wanting to claim the win all for himself. The episode preempts feelings of disgust by having Prada suggest to Roxy that the spell is only temporary, and they decide not to burst his bubble by hiding the truth from him. Clay soon disintegrates into brown goop, so the trawlers get to keep the first place trophy after all, although it crushes them on the walk back. So happy ending, very nice, and the plot gets 8 out of 10 from me. I enjoyed the competition overall, but the counselor race was definitely my favorite part. It was the buck of the episode, if you think about it. The trawlers are the main characters here, and although I'd say their plan to create the perfect camper kind of constitutes cheating, they didn't really do so in a malicious way, and that gives more context to their character as seen from the fact that they didn't even bother disputing Clay's claim that he wasn't part of the Trawlers. I think it's probably because they just didn't want to break the bad news to him, so they're not so malicious and spooky after all. Animation gets 8 out of 10. Probably the most iconic scenes here featured not the Trawlers, but Larry and Clay, especially where there were electrified chum balls being thrown at them. I really like Patrick's grossness with the pancakes, Squidward just deciding to surrender and sit back and relax, and the various ways in which Clay morphed his body into the counselors he was imitating to take advantage of their capabilities. Unique characteristics gets 8 out of 10 too. We really need more game slash camp wide events in the series, and this one was really fun and unique, especially given the focus on the campers of the trawler cabin. Overall, The Perfect Camper gets 24 out of 30 from me. So that's all for our review, guys. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought about these two episodes. Make sure to subscribe, like, and I'll see you guys again in the next SpongeBob video coming real soon. Till then, bye!